All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you that are out there. All right, those that are in the kingdom of the living God, God bless you. Uh, and those that are not of the household of faith, the door is open. God is calling out to all those that desire the, the goodness that he has in store for all those that pay attention to him, those that are close and focused on him, because ultimately he has the keys to salvation. And so um, we, we, we have um, some things to talk about this late night tonight, and um, I, I want to get some things clear, um, get some things um, uh, into the airways to to help uh, strengthen the body of Christ, the true church in understanding what's happening in the world today, what's happening and how to stay prepared, how to stay focused, how to continue to walk this walk of faith. The, the just shall live by faith. And so we we want to we want to definitely talk about some things. So before we continue, I want to definitely uh, check uh, my audio uh, just to make sure we're good here. Um, and so. Yes. All right. So um, one of the first things that I, I want to talk about, because the title is ultimately uh, BLM is witchcraft. Um, you know, the true church needs to stay alert, needs to uh, uh, be the watchmen that they are, uh, because there are so many things that are happening, so many shifts that are happening that we have to uh, pay attention to so that we are not uh, the casualties that are, um, you know, that, that ultimately God doesn't want us to be. And so God wants us to thrive and to to advance the kingdom of God and prepare the the, the atmosphere for his coming. And so now, um, you know, one, one of the things that we know that the word of God tells us is that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed or paying attention to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And so uh, the, the reality is we know that this world is not just physical. You know, this is why sometimes when, you know, I hear a scientist talking about creation or, or talking about the anatomy, when I hear them um, talking about uh, what we are from just a natural uh, perspective, it's, it's not a whole perspective. It's, 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 it's not ultimately all that we are. We know that we are, uh, we have at least three components to our body. We, we have the physical, of course, that everybody is, that is everybody is familiar with. Um, we have the, the soul that, that is more so like the, the software of our body. We have also our spirit and that's also an, an element of, of software or, or the, or the, another, um, element to our anatomy that God, that comes from God, that God puts in us. And so we know that when we are born again, the Holy spirit couples with our human spirit and begins the work of transforming our soul. The soul is what needs to be transformed. The soul is what's riddled with sin. It, that's where the personality lies. And that personality within the soul, that needs to be transformed. Also, the, 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 the actual flesh conforming to the transforming uh, transformation of our entire being. So, uh, so yes, we know our the the complexity of what we are as a being is more than what science uh, uh, the the science of this world knows. We are far more. The Bible tells us what we are on the many different levels um, in which we exist that we are. And so, so uh, that being said. There's the understanding of the fact that sin has damaged, sin has damaged 
who we are, what we are. Sin has has it has been like a cancer within the soul, a cancer within the body. And and God is ultimately the one who makes provision for our souls to be regenerated, to be rescued from its corrupted state. And so when we're talking about this life, where we're talking about the need for us to understand that this is not all that there is, and God wants to invite us into an e eternal existence with him forever. And so th there is a lot of work that needs to be done. There's so many things that has to happen so that we can ultimately spend eternity with God. And so God is in uh, the process of regenerating us after his own image, those that are born again, those that are uh, filled with the spirit of God, those that uh, are, are focused on him and desire him and ultimately want to, to, to partake in the inheritance that he has laid up for all those that believe on him and walk after that belief, that belief, because we know that faith without works is dead. And so it's vital that we remain in a constant state of growth and maturity towards the ultimate fulfillment of what he has designed us to be beyond this limited physical body that people see, but yet don't understand the full potential of. And so as we're, uh, you know, talking about this uh, Black Lives Matter um, uh, uh, movement, this, 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 this invasion that has happened uh, within the world, one of the things that God hates, God one of the things that we have to come to grips with is that we have to know that it's important that we uh, have a passion to love what God loves and uh, uh, a, a true passion to hate what God hates because God does hate and God does love. Um, this false doctrine out there will tell you that God only loves, but no, God does hate because there are such things in the world that are bad. And there are such things in the world that are good. And God is a God of good, a God that creates good. And he also has created evil. And he wants us to make a choice to participate, to partake in all that he has, which is good. And so as believers, we go in that direction, even though we have a sinful nature that tries to pull us in the opposite way. But we know that by God's grace, strength and power, we will become what he is intended that we be. So now one of the things that I wanted to definitely unpack, because, you know, there's a, there's layers of this that I want to unfold. One of the things that I want to say is that the BLM, BLM movement is something uh, that has only uh, come into a bigger uh, movement, a bigger movement in which we call, in which God prepared us for, which is the Antichrist movement. The Antichrist movement has been here for a long time and is maturing in the different, um, being, uh, there's many different incidences, many different things that are being used to to forward the antichrist agenda and so one of the things uh, is this movement it's been happening for a while now if if you know this is why discernment is so monumental it's so important this, the bible talks about in uh first uh corinthians chapter 12 talks about the 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 gift of discernment and th that's that's very very important and even if we don't have that supernatural gift of discernment. We, we ought to have discernment as a Christian, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the true church, uh, we, we have to understand that it's important for us to discern the patterns of the enemy um, so that we can be the watchmen that help guard the people that are not uh, uh, not seeing what we see. It's so when we're talking about this black movement, when we're talking about this African, African, African American movement, when we're talking about 
the different things within the media that were uh, pulling people towards this African uh, movement, uh, the, the different movies that have recently come out, the, the different um, uh, 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 cases of police brutality that uh, people have inflated um, the, the different things that have happened recently up until the M Minneapolis um, fires uh, because of uh, other cases or whatnot. And so one of the things I, I want to share a quick testimony because I want to kind of bring this in in reference to a testimony uh, of a specific dream that the Lord gave my wife. And this dream was, it's almost as if we both had the dream because before the fires broke out in the Minneapolis uh, area, before that whole ordeal happened, which caused what we see today, one of the things that uh, was happening was, I, I was actually making a video at the time and it was a video out um, on Sodom and Gomorrah. And I remember choosing uh, a, a city on fire background, a city on fire background. And, and the thing is, I felt led to do that. I felt that was it, right? And, and sometimes we don't know that God is working behind the scenes um, of our actions. And so my wife has a dream the same night to where the whole uh, she, she didn't know what I was doing. She didn't know what video topic was on. She didn't know any of that. And so she has a dream to where the entire, I, I believe she said world, um, could have been city, but she said world was on fire. Uh, and what happens is, you know, there's actually a multitude of things that happen within the dream. And so, you know, when it comes to dreams, uh, there is the need to understand that there are multiple layers and at times the Lord can be speaking multiple ways within a particular dream. And so one of the things that the Lord was showing me in reference to the fire element of the dream was that this was something that the entire world would have to um, undergo. This was something worldwide, something monumental. Um, so as I was further attempting to interpret my wife's dream, uh, there were uh, multitudes of, of things that were happening to the degree that there was a having to run from different sections of the city. One that was a it was a running away that had to happen. I'm not going to reveal ele every element of the dream, but the important ones to help. Uh, to solidify what I'm saying in reference to this video. So in so as the fires continued, she 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 was basically talking about how the color of the sky was orange. It was orange and it had all manner of deb debris in the air. Uh, there was all manner of 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 people just screaming and yelling. Um, and there was a point to where, um, so this was the day after when she told me about the dream, but one of the things that was so supernatural about it is the fact that she did not know that I made the video. She did not know my uh, um, agenda as far as the video, and the video was actually on homosexuality. The, the video was, uh, the, I think the title was the judgments of old and how they relate to the judgments of the new judgments. And so that was monumental for me because it was just a manifestation of what God was allowing in the atmosphere, what God was just showing us so that we can be prepared for the onslaught that was coming. And so it was, uh, a manifestation of 
of just the need for us as sons of God to make sure that we're prepared and that we're alert and that we're focused so that we can continue moving forward as to not um, be um, hindered by any things that are, are, are attempting to to derail or, or to uh, to cause us to look in the opposite direction. And so th these are the supernatural things that God does. And it's important that we uh, reflect on these things because they are uh, things to help strengthen our faith and, and move us in the direction that God has ordained. So um, one of the important things about us, you know, staying focused is that focused is the idea that there is a standard that is in place and I am in full um, awareness of that standard and I'm keeping that standard as to get the rewards that will come as a benefit of fulfilling the responsibility or the standard of the task. And so these are the some of the th same things that God is reminding us even in these times of testing. He's reminding us of these things so that we can be uh, uh, the ones that ultimately overcome because overcoming is a very, very important word because it describes the over, um, it describes how you go over uh, something that is an a, a, a adverse situation. You overcome it. You, you don't let it hinder your forward movement or progression. And so that's very important. So one of the uh, things I wanted to talk about in reference to the children of Israel, you know, because we, we have to talk about this, how this BL, BLM, uh, you know, I'm not used to saying it, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we want to talk about how this thing is witchcraft, is witchcraft. One of the things that we because we just don't want to say it without evidence, without evidence. And so uh, one of the things that God gives us, as I was saying earlier, is that discernment. And so one of the things that you will find uh, publicly as common knowledge is the leaders of the BLM movement are, are in their statements, they no, they, they have an agenda to uh, demobilize the family structure, to disintegrate uh, the, the family structure. They, they're, they're, they have agendas that are ultimately anti-Christian, that are anti-Christ, that are not according to the pattern that God has set for his sons and daughters you know that that he set ultimately for creation to thrive and to succeed and so uh one of the uh important things um about the children of israel as they came out of egypt was the fact that god gave them laws god gave gave them statutes god gave them uh these types of commandments that would ultimately introduce standards of righteousness to them because of what they were used to, which was the uh, perpetual cycle of sin manifesting in their lives and, and the results of that manifesting in their lives. And so this is what righteousness does. Righteousness coming into um, a person's mind and heart and knowing how things work, knowing why we ought to do things the way that we do them. This brings about uh, biological, uh, emotional, uh, psychological success. It brings about all manner of success. And so what we know, the enemy has another agenda. Satan, the devil, has another agenda to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we know that through the ignorance of men, they don't see that. They don't know that. And so... They're allowing themselves to be caught up in all manner of things because they can't see. And so we're, we're talking about how the anti-Christian agenda, the anti-Christ agenda is an agenda to 
ultimately bring about the antichrist is to bring about this man of sin this this a man of desolation that ultimately will be destroyed by the lord jesus christ uh, as the word of god says with the brightness of his coming with the sword of his mouth uh and so as they were coming out of uh of egypt out of the house of bondage as god says there is a need for them to be introduced to a new standard so that they can uh, begin to walk in a the way of blessing but of course we know through their own sinful characteristics they were uh, complaining they were uh, doing all sorts of acts of unrighteousness and injustice injustice they were ultimately uh, walking in the ways of Egypt, the building uh, golden calves and, and, and uh, uh, you know, doing all manner of, of evil, perverse uh, things that would ultimately bring them uh, judgment, um, harsh judgment. Uh, and so this is what people don't know that they're in position for. When we, so this black movement as we were talking about uh it's it's not just a black movement but the the smoke and mirrors uh try to capitalize on this so-called black movement um to bring about an ultimate anti-christian movement and so the uh the thing is there is the antichrist that that though the spirit of the antichrist that is moving people to do things one of the things that you will openly hear is that the leaders of the blm movement um are witches they're they're sorcerers they're 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 wizards uh, warlocks these characteristics are the characteristics of the pagan. And one of the things that you will definitely hear them say is the fact that this BLM movement is a spiritual movement. And and so when 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 they when we see that it's a spiritual movement, we have to ask ourselves what spirit? What spirit? Because we know that the spirit of God is is the uh the a righteous spirit where they do things according to God's standard, according to the word of God, not according to emotions and, and all sorts of sins that um, are not beneficial for the progression of any nation. So when, when uh, the, the, when, when the people walk in all manner of darkness out on the streets and, and we know that they they um, they chant and and shout and and riot and and do all manner of things. These things are the ways of the heathen, especially when we're talking about the chanting, the chanting of the names of those those people that were so called brutalized by cops. Um, the the the. The, the the manifestation of the need for them to uh, to do what is in their hearts is ultimately a manifestation of this level of antichrist uh, unction or this this level of antichrist movement that is flowing within them. One of the things that happens is that when we're talking about sin, we're talking about how sin connects with other sin. And the, re the reason why I say that is because one of the reasons why some people are put in certain positions is because of a life of sin. So when a person lives a life of sin, they're put in po position to be attracted by an antichrist movement so an antichrist movement is a, is this movement ultimately one of the movements ultimately that is uh the manif the manifestation of the, the a, a, a judgment 
um, on the people from God. And so this level of deception is something that people have to know that is in operation in the land. We know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against uh, principalities, against rulers uh, of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in the high places. We, we work, we fight against these unclean, dark forces that attempt to 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 invoke that intent to maneuver uh, uh, people's belief and minds in a particular direction, leading them to do things that are ultimately not in God's goodwill for them. And so uh, one of the scriptures that I wanted to read was a scripture in the book of, let's see here, uh, the book of, Deuteronomy, I believe. Let's see here, the book of Deuteronomy. It says in verse 9, verse 9 of chapter 18 uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, When thou art come into a land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou art not to learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doeth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. And so we're seeing here that God is naming these particular sins and acts that foreign nations commit. One of the things that we see is that the, the, these gatherings, these movements, these, uh, the, the rioting, the, the, the different um, out, out, outdoor movements that these people are doing, one of the things that we are seeing is the increasing unrighteousness, the increasing darkness that is manifesting through their works, through their, through their actions. And so when we're talking about the, the root and the, 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 the foundation of this organization, um, we're, we're talking about individuals that I've already said are participating in which um, witchcraft and, and necromancy, which is is trying to um, pray to the dead, trying to seek the dead for counsel. Uh, when we're talking about um, enchanter or div divination, we're, we're talking about the the fact that we have an an uh, an, uh, an illegal spiritual. Uh, acts, acts of that acts that are illegal according to the Lord, and there are not things that are um, in any way going to bring about blessing. They're going to bring about curse. They're going to bring about all manner of evil that hinder a person from doing what they um, or, or being what God would delight that they be. And so all of this is something that needs to be, um, we have to sh uh, stay away from. This is something that is dark. It's, it's full of corruption and it's, and it's only getting worse. And so the need for the church to stay away from this is vital. Because there is a drawing of a line in the sand in reference to this movement. This movement is not from God at all. It's all the way on the left side. It's all the way the devil. And so 
uh, we as sons of God need to, you know, because there, there, there are, we, we have to, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this because there are so many churches that are participating in this Black Lives Matter movement talk. This, you know, uh, there are, are counseling for for different members in churches, you know, to be culturally sensitive and and to learn how to deal with the black culture and and all of these different ideas that are being pushed to uh, to to try to say that there is a um, some injustice that needs to be. Uh, f the focal point that police brutality is the number one issue in the black community uh, when that is totally not true. You know, fatherlessness is high on the 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 the, the bar in reference to um, the, the problem that we can say is the root of many different issues within the black community but but most and but f the first and foremost issue the top issue is the fact that jesus is not at the center of someone's life and that right there is not just a black thing that right there is a all people thing an all culture thing there needs to be jesus the true creator of heaven and earth uh, the God of all existence, that God needs to be at the center of a person's life. And that that person needs to walk in the ways of Jesus so that they can ultimately become what God has ordained them to become um, in righteousness. And so these are the different terms that we're seeing in the Old Testament that we see uh, people doing in the New Testament that we know that people still participate in these abominable acts in, in this current modern day. People are still walking in these different characteristics and behaviors because because of the sin problem. There is a internal issue that needs to be addressed and the only way that can truly be addressed is through the word of God, is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the 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 Messiah, the 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 man of of, of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you know. So the the reality is there are so many different uh, people, leaders within the church, within Christendom, that are supporting this Black Lives Matter movement, that are that are um, affirming this movement, and it's just a manifestation of the lack of discernment, and that the spirit of Antichrist has invaded their world, uh, because it's when the Lord positions a person to be hypnotized by this uh, particular movement here is just a sign of, of other issues, of other problems that needs to be addressed in that person's life. Uh, we, we know that, th that there is a strong delusion that is coming and these are the preliminary signs of strong delusion that has the power to to hinder people from staying focused on Jesus and and praying and interceding for the church because there's an out out uh, there's an all out attack on the church there's an all out attack on uh the people of God there's an all out attack on the entire earth and so there is a need for us to remain focused, remain diligent, to remain um, steadfast in the direction that God has ordained so that we can ultimately see the benefits of what we were promised through the Lord who promises eternal life, promises uh, every good thing that we desire. And so, you know, yeah, so, you know, we, we got to be people that can see, can really see through this. This is not of God. This is not of God. And we, we can't 
uh, stamp God on this. You can't stamp God on BLM. You, it's either BLM or God, the true God, not the false gods, not the 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 spirits that manip the manipulated spirits that manipulate individuals into manipulating masses of people, you know, not you know. So we we want to understand that God is doing a work and he wants to save people from themselves. He wants to save people from unclean, ungodly spirits that want to uh, spread deception. God is in the business of saving souls, saving people. And so we we want to make sure that we're focused in the, in these last days because you know, and, and you may say, man, hey, man, your title, man, is that's pretty harsh, man. It's pretty harsh. Or you may say some of the things I probably said in this video, you must say, man, that's pretty harsh, man. I'm telling you, in, in these times, we, we have to get more to the point. We have to say what we're saying because, you know, we, this, this is not a time in which we should be sugarcoating stuff. It's not a time for us to be just... Um, you know, uh, not being direct as we ought to, because the Antichrist is moving at a rapid pace, destroying lives, uh, doing so much darkness that it, it it is it's to some degree impeding the 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 process, the progress of what the saints ought to be doing. We ought to be praying so that this veil can be lifted up so people can actually see what's actually happening, actually going on. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much it for tonight, at least. Um, yeah, continue to be that prayer warrior. Continue to um, those that are sons of God, those that know what they ought to be doing, those that are about their father's business. Um, continue to do the work of faith uh, and allow God to to lead you as you do it because there is a a deception that is trying to hinder the sons and daughters of God from uh, doing what they ought to in Christ Jesus and so uh, if you I want I want to uh, just uh, call out to all those who have allowed themselves to be deceived by this BLM movement or any other any of these other African rooted movements um, you know I, I've said a lot of things but I, I want at this moment I want to pray uh, and I want you if you have participated in this if you believe in this whole black lives matter movement thing if you believe in all this stuff uh, and you you have recanted that you have repented of that because of what I've said tonight I want to pray with you I want um to see that God restores your focus I want to see that God restores your understanding that he implants his power in you so that you can move forward and not be hindered in the uh in the progression of your faith uh so pray with me if uh yeah, so one of the good things is that God delights in the transformation of his people. And, and no one says that this faith walk is going to be easy. One of the things, one of the uh, scriptures that I'm reminded of uh, is in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2, where it talks about uh, that we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus onto good works that God has ordained before from the foundations of the world, that we ought to walk in these good deeds, these works that are a manifestation of the transformation that is going on internally. So it's not a work righteous dot. It's not work righteous. It's it's the it's what's happening on the inside manifesting on the outside. And so God wants to transform us. And so I want to pray with you now. Uh, so uh, pray with me. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you for your forgiveness. And even now, I pray that you remove the tentacles of the spirit of Antichrist that has invaded my vision. I thank you that even now that you are bringing me closer to you. You have forgiven me for my sins. You are changing my heart. You are renewing my spirit. Father, continue to Teach me to walk in repentance and to be renewed in the spirit of my mind. Be, be blessed, O oh God of salvation. Thank you for life now and on to eternity with you forever. I pray that you make me one of those ones that will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So if you pray that prayer, it's important that you know that it's not just about prayer because the God who is behind prayer definitely hears your prayers and moves on those prayers. But it's important that you are in sync together with a body, a Bible-believing body of Christ. If you are part of a church that doesn't really communicate the spiritual things of God, uh, more of a social club type atmosphere, you want to leave that. You want to be where you will grow. And so I'm not one of those ones that are going to say, oh, you shouldn't leave churches. No, no, no. You, if you're not growing, you need to go somewhere else, straight up. <laughs> so it's important that you are a part of a healthy body that is adding to your growth, that is leading you towards the image of Jesus. And so that's it for tonight. Um, God bless you all. Uh, and stay focused. As I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ in your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in Jesus name. God bless you. Walk in salvation and in his victory.